The Human Centipede films are perhaps best described as being infamous for being depraved and disgusting. They deliberately set out to revolt and offend, and that makes them hard to judge. But looking past that, do the Human Centipede films have something to say, or are they purely cynical? Although it's something I will cover in a later video, I think there's much to be said about the place of gore and violence in film. In some films it seems to be warranted, in others it's employed cynically. The human centipedes are much like splatter films, or what we might now call torture porn, gory horror. But the gory content doesn't mean the films don't have any meaning or social commentary. The critical difference is in intention, and that's what I'll be examining here. Are these films trying to say something or reflect something? Or are they just made to increase someone's reputation or notoriety, and to make some cash from some curious people and fans of the genre? Now I have already made a video about The Human Centipede, but it was one of my first film vlogs, and really I was just riffing on it. Now I should say that The Human Centipede films obviously do have artistic value, just as all media does. They reflect culture, society, ideas and assumptions, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're artistic or meaningful. So let's jump right in. The Human Centipede. It's about a mad doctor who spent his professional life separating conjoined twins, so now wants to spend his retirement creating, and I suppose caring for, a yes, you guessed it, human centipede. What a twist. This obviously means three people who've had the ligaments in their legs cut, so they have to move around on their hands and knees, with their mouths attached to someone's anus, or if they're lucky, I suppose, just their anus attached to someone's mouth. And that's what this whole thing is all about. Three films stemming from one idea. An idea formed by director Tom Six. You know, my original idea for the Human Centipede films was sewing a child molester's mouth to the anus of a fat truck driver as a punishment. So I love this. An idea that on its own grabbed the public's attention. You see, the first film is, apart from the Human Centipede part, very standard. You've got a mad doctor who's the instigator of the film's happenings. A Japanese man who isn't at all grateful to be the head of the centipede, and two girls who get lost in the woods, and inexplicably decide the best course of action is to leave the road entirely. Nothing to do with anything, but in my other video, I say that when the girls find Dr. Centipede's house, that's when, for me, the movie stops being grounded in reality. But also, I have to wonder if this influenced a scene I found similar in 2015's Knock Knock. Yes? Oh, we're so sorry to bother you, sir, but could you please tell us where the Gregory's live? This is the third house we've tried. Looks like everyone's gone for the long weekend. <laughs> How different the world would have been if Keanu Reeves had taken the role of Dr. Heiter instead of Dieter Laza. So you'll all be connected by a single digestive system. Whoa. Anyway, the story is a typical sort of fair, where two girls get lost in the woods and stumble across something they wish they hadn't. But usually, that's a masked lunatic or something like that. Well, obviously this guy is a lunatic. Look at those crocs. He sews them all together, and really, it's a conventional horror film where the human centipede has succeeded almost all horror tropes. There's very little gore on screen in the first film, much of it is suggested, and really the horror comes from the notion of the human centipede itself. It's a deeply unpleasant concept, but it seems as though Six really went out of his way to make the film as disgusting as possible. Because, from the moment it's described, we know exactly what the human centipede is. But that doesn't stop the film from showing us over and over again. But whilst it is perhaps excessive in revelling in the glory of its monster, I don't think it's gratuitous otherwise. As we'll see in the sequels, the first film is quite restrained, and it seems to me much more focused on the horrific idea than the nitty gritty. Again, there is some of that, but it doesn't feel totally over the top. Ludicrous, yes, but my point is, is that the horror comes from the idea of the centipede itself, not from watching somebody get their mouth sewn to someone's butt, although maybe a bit. It is gory, but I don't think it's an attempt to make the most gory film ever made. Maybe the most horrific, but not the most graphic. The references to Nazi war crimes are obvious. Dieter Lazar here couldn't really look more like a Nazi. I've heard people argue it's a comment about filmmaking or about political correctness. What I would say is it does feel as though it is a comment about something. Whether that something was known to filmmakers, I'm not sure. 
The film's repulsiveness is not a byproduct of its message, not at all. And I think some scenes and some shots have been chosen not for their artistic value, but out of awareness of the audience and what the audience wants or doesn't want. Plus two, I think it should be noted that this was one of Six's first films and really his first bigger film. And he probably wanted to get noticed and that's a hard thing to do. That surely is cynical, but I don't think this film is made from only cynicism or want for attention, but also from a want to explore things that many people say you shouldn't. That's just conjecture, but it seems to me that the first Human Centipede film comes from someone who had a scary idea and wanted to share that with people, and who probably wanted those people to say, this is sick. I think if it isn't offering artistic or deeper meaning, it is at least a bit of a fuck you. And that, in itself, is a commentary. The following two films expand on and magnify what's come before. They're both very metaphysical, self-aware, and rely much more on visual horror. And they both seem to be trying to be as nasty as possible. The Human Centipede 2 is the series' most basic story. Essentially, it's this. Weirdo Martin is obsessed with the first film. He decides to make his own Human Centipede, and smashes people over the head with a crowbar over and over again, until he has a room full of naked Londoners, who eventually become a much longer human centipede that he rapes, and eventually that kind of kills him. It's an entirely different tone. It feels surreal, and not an attempt to make a real world, but a dreamlike one. Now, let's see. The centipede can be considered a phallic symbol. Centipedes are very aggressive creatures. Of course, that's exactly what it turns out to be, or at least what it's suggested to be. The Human Centipede 2 is the film most trying to be, or trying to emulate, art. Namely a razor head, and maybe a little bit sallow. However, I think this is an appearance only. And I'm not sure we as an audience are really meant to be convinced by this. Film 2 feels more like an anti-art art horror. The weird music lacks subtlety and much like the rest of the film, is derivative. The film feels like the biggest effort in the series to disgust. We as an audience know that there's going to be a human centipede, and we know what a human centipede is. And the filmmakers, of course, know that we know. So, instead of disgusting us with an idea, they use upsetting imagery. I'm not going to show you these things, but we see a woman who's had her head caved in, masturbation with sandpaper, a woman raped by a man who's put barbed wire around his penis, and a newborn baby's head be crushed. And let's not forget Martin himself having an actual centipede climb inside his anus. Those aren't words I ever thought I would say. I think how you react to these things depends a lot on personal preference and personal experience. If you've never seen a film that sounds like The Human Centipede before, it'll probably be the most horrific film you'll ever see. For me, I feel desensitised to these sorts of things, and the disgusting nature of it was really just obnoxious. I would argue that the second film, which sacrifices really all story for continual extreme body horror, is almost entirely cynical. You might be able to derive a message from it, from a theme of childhood trauma and control. Stop them tears. You're just making daddy's willy harder. But I think any subtext is really there as a pretense, almost like an excuse for its content. The black and white, the weird music, the tone. It's not an art film, even if at first it seems to be one. It feels exploitative, and unlike the first, which you could argue someone wanted to make because they had something to say, it doesn't add anything to any conversation. For me, this sequel, made only a year after The Human Centipede, is an attempt to top the first and cash in on its notoriety. While there is an interesting tone created, and it certainly has a sense of irony, its real value lies almost entirely in its ability to shock. Now while the second film may have been a cynical sequel, made because it would be commercially successful, in DVD sales at least, the third seems to me to be a film in the same vein, where they knew people would come for the horror, but at the same time a film where Six did absolutely whatever he wanted. The Human Centipede 3 is set in a prison where Dieter Lasser and Lawrence R. Harvey from the second film are reunited as different characters, kind of, who decide the only way to cut prison costs and reduce violence is to 
make a human centipede, naturally, with the collaboration of the prison doctor. Is it possible? Very clever, Mr. Butler. But this, all of this, is beginning to be in serious conflict with my Hippocratic Oath. Oh, really? What part? I thought the Hippocratic Oath was all for human centipedes. If the Human Centipede 2 did everything it could to gross its audience out, the Human Centipede 3 is much more concerned with offending them. Racial slurs, sexual harassment, indiscriminate killing, wholesale cruelty, all presented with a glibness overlaid that makes the film kind of humorous. You know, Bill Boss, I used to look up to you. I used to honor worship you. I worked 10 years for you. And I grew this stupid moustache to look like you. This film is so cynical and so devoid of really having anything to say, it promotes the series over and over. First of all, Mr Six, I'd like to say congratulations on your movies. Great to meet you. My name's Daisy. I, I was wondering if you could sign an autograph for me before you go in. I want you to watch these. <coughs> oh, I've seen those. They're really good. That B-movie shit! Is it an attempt to be intentionally bad? Meta almost to the point of self-parody? Well, I'd say it isn't an attempt to be intentionally bad. It's just an attempt to excuse itself. Because it knows how alienating it is. Not least, with Dear to Laza on overdrive. And I suspect either given free reign or just badly misdirected. To the point where you can't really understand what he's saying. Is that the way he came the kid? Weirdly, Lazar didn't want to be in the film. I wonder why. The main difference with this film is that it's a farce. Instead of pies in faces, it's bullets in abdomens, or dear to Lazar's character being raped in the kidney. Yes, that happens, and I think I've just answered my previous question. The Human Centipede 3 is so self-aware, it's almost a surprise the last act doesn't feature a straight-to-camera monologue from either Lazar or Six, who has a walk-on part as himself. Six had said it's a film not to be taken entirely seriously, and I'd agree with him on that. But he also suggested it's some sort of satire of the US prison system, and it really, really isn't. Something like Stir Crazy is much more of a satire about the prison system than The Human Centipede 3 is. I've heard people describe The Human Centipedes 2 and 3 as an answer to critics, and this film does that directly. These films risk causing harm! But I would argue that the way it does that, or that it does it at all, to be rather immature. In fact, I think if The Human Centipedes 2 and 3 had never been made, and Tom Six had gone on to make something entirely different, the first Human Centipede film would be held in much higher regard. All of the films are amateurish. The first is obviously from a small production, but the second is made in such a way it's desperate to break the rules. It doesn't follow the line, the characters are caricatures, and as I said, while I am a fan of black and white, I think here it's just a ruse to make things look a bit better and a bit more arty. The third film seems amateurish in the same sort of way that Tom Green's stuff from the 90s seems amateurish. It's trolling and self-indulgent, but this is a film from 2015. Whilst the amateurishness of the first film can be explained by the production being small and Tom Six being relatively inexperienced, I think the amateurishness in the second and third films is there because of filmmaking laziness and overconfidence. And I think it somewhat discredits the idea that the last two films have much in the way of meaning. Their constant self-referencing and self-awareness may appear to offer something along the lines of a comment on a genre but I don't think there really is one. The first film has more value simply because it wasn't pumped out knowing what it should be and with the objective of being as shocking and as disgusting as possible. I don't usually talk about what directors or actors do off screen or out of the arts, but I wanted to bring up Tom Six's Twitter. You have no idea how many totally insane ideas manifest themselves in my brain each day. Is it one? Is it the same one you've been having for the last 10 years? Six, who says that his films will be talked about in a hundred years' time, and is quite possibly right, really does see himself as a horror genius. I think that somewhat undermines the idea that these films could be considered art or heavy on meaning. 
The sequels are much more about Tom Six than they are about anything else. And really, they take the pretentious part of art in film and leave out the artful or meaningful part. Now, even if these films are made cynically, with only DVD sales in mind, they're not worthless. The meanings behind them, if they're given one, really depend on the audience and what they think. However, Tom Six said one of his greatest inspirations was Salo, a deeply disturbing Italian film which features brutal and perverted scenes. But Salo is deeply political and has very deliberate meanings behind what it shows. But it seems to me that Six's appreciation of Salo wasn't for its intellectual subtext. Do the human centipede films have meaning? Probably. It's very hard to make a film that doesn't have a meaning, even if it is an accidental one. In my opinion, they're nowhere near as deep or as clever as they think they are, and the merits of the idea are expounded entirely in the first film. What the really frustrating thing is, is if you had someone like Hieronymus Bosch, or the Marquis de Sade, or H.R. Giger, alive today and working as a director, what they could come up with would be so much more terrifying and meaningful. So those are my thoughts on the Human Centipede series. You may well have had different reactions, and I'd love to know what they are. As ever, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I have a Twitter if you want to tweet to me, a Facebook if you want to face me, and a Patreon if you want to patronise me. Next time will be a bit of a shorter video, I think, and I'll be discussing The Mummy, The Dark Universe, and why The Mummy wasn't quite the cash cow Universal so desperately wanted. See you then. Oh, and let's not forget Martin himself have an actual centipede climb inside his anus. Jesus Christ. <laughs>